Hey, today I'm going to show you how to create this really cool stained glass effect in After Effects using our new Crates Glass plugin from the LaForge suite. You may have seen our previous video where David showed you the basics of using this plugin, and it can be used to create all kinds of really crazy cool logo effects, but today I'm going to show you a really specific one, and that's this stained glass effect. This can be used to create a stylized logo or a really realistic actual stained glass window. If you want to follow along, go to Production Crate and download Portal, and then install the LaForge suite. And even if you have a free account, you can still follow along, you'll just have a watermark. Alright, let's jump in. Okay, so we're in After Effects, and let me show you what I have in here so far. First of all, I have our logo, and importantly, this has an alpha channel, so there's no black background. I also have this video, which is going to serve as my background footage. You can use whatever you want, of course. And then I have this picture of a stained glass window for reference. And it's pretty high res, so I can zoom in really close and look at the details. Okay, first I'm gonna make a composition. Whatever size you want is fine. I'm gonna go with 1920 by 1080. And then I'll drag my logo on here. Now, first things first, because this logo is square and the composition is rectangular, that can sometimes cause some issues with what I'm about to do. Not with the plugin, but just normal After Effects weirdness. So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna immediately pre-compose this, making sure to move all attributes to the new composition and I'll name this Logo Comp. Okay, now looking at my reference, I can see that it's obviously full of solid colors with black lines in between, which is kind of what our logo already looks like, which is really nice, but if I look, it's not just solid colors, there's some variation in there. And if I look closely, I can also see that there's this metal mesh, these, these squares, this grid inside. So I wanna to try to replicate that. And if you look at some older window references, I don't really have an example here, but sometimes you'll see scratches and damage in the glass as well. So let's start by adding some really quick and easy variation to the colors. And I'll do that by going up to layer, down to layer styles, and going to inner glow. Over here in the inner glow settings, I'll open this up, change the color to white, I'll change my blending mode here to overlay, and let's increase the size. Now you can see that this gives you some imperfections in the solid colors. So it almost looks like the glass is getting thinner around the edges. You can also play with the opacity if you want, really crank it up or turn it down to make it more subtle. I'll leave that all totally up to you. Now to add the grid. I'm gonna right click and add a new solid layer. Doesn't matter what color it is, but I'll call this grid. Over here in the effects, I'm gonna search for the grid effect and drag and drop that onto my solid. And over here where it says size from corner point, I'll change this to width slider. That makes all the squares actually square instead of rectangular. We can turn down the width slider to make the squares smaller. And we can see that the lines are really thick, so we can lower that by going over to the border size and turning that down a little bit, maybe three. I also wanna change the color of the grid to black. So that looks pretty good, but we do have a problem. If I turn off the background by clicking this button right here, I can see that the grid actually extends outside the bounds of my logo, and that's not gonna be good for what we're about to do. So I'm gonna go over here into the effects and I'll search for set matte, and I'll drag and drop this onto the grid layer. And where it says take matte from layer, I'm gonna choose the logo composition. So now the grid is confined to just where the logo is. Lastly on the grid, I'm gonna turn down the opacity quite a lot. It doesn't need to be very dark. Okay, this is pretty good. This would actually work already, but I'm gonna add a little bit of surface imperfection as well. You go over to Production Crate and search for the word imperfection and go over to the graphics category. You can find lots of black and white grunge maps. And the one you pick really depends on the look you're going for. Maybe you want a really scratchy look. Maybe you want fingerprint smudges. Maybe you want dirt and dust. I'm gonna go for this scratchy look. So I'm gonna grab Surface Imperfections 37. Again, feel free to pick whichever one you want. I don't really need a 7K version though, so I'll just grab the 4K version. Back in After Effects, I'll drag and drop this into my project, and then I'll put it onto the canvas. Let's set the blending mode here to screen, and then scale and position this where I want it. Something like that. Okay, once again, I wanna confine this to just where the logo is. But I can't just grab the set matte effect and apply it to the grunge. As you can see, because I've scaled and moved that layer, it doesn't quite line up with our logo anymore. So I'm gonna undo that. And before I drag and drop the set matte effect on there, I'm gonna right click on the grunge layer and pre-compose it. Be sure to name it grunge. And I'm gonna move all attributes to the new composition and press okay. Now I can choose the set matte effect and choose the logo composition layer, set the blending mode to screen. And I definitely wanna turn down the opacity on this. It's a little bit too intense. But now we've got some scratched, discolored glass. And if I turn on the transparency, I can see everything is contained within the logo, which is really important. So next I'm gonna highlight everything, right click, pre-compose, and I'll call this window pattern. Again, be sure to move all the attributes to the new composition. Now drag and drop your footage underneath your logo. Doesn't matter what the footage is, but this is what's going to be reflecting through the glass. Next, let's right click and add a new adjustment layer. 
And now we'll search for the crates glass effect and drag and drop that onto the adjustment layer. Inside the crates glass effect, I'm gonna go over to textures and open that up. And I'll choose layer two, which is the window pattern. Now it looks a little bit crazy, but that's because we wanna hide the window pattern. We don't actually need to have the layer on. So I'll turn that layer off. And now we can see it's taking the shape of the layer based on the alpha channel of that window pattern. And it's refracting through the logo as if it was glass. This is already looking pretty cool, but we're going for the stained glass look. So here are some settings that will help you achieve that effect. If you open up the glass material settings, first thing you wanna do is click here where it says use input as absorption. That's gonna take the color information from the texture layer, in this case, layer two, the window pattern, and it's gonna apply it to the glass and tint it. Next, we can refine the edge to make it look a little bit flatter because stained glass panels are pretty flat. So over here in glass shape, I'm gonna change the bevel width and reduce that a little bit. Now, if you have a really sharp logo like we do, you can also reduce the smoothing to sharpen up the edges if you want to. That kind of reduces the bevel width when I do that though, so I might go back and increase the bevel width again a little bit. Actually, feel free to play with all of these settings as much as you want. Now, stained glass isn't as sharp and clear as this, so I'm gonna increase the blurring so we don't see such a clear image through the glass. And once again, feel free to play with all of these settings to try to get the exact look you're trying to achieve. Last step down here, I'm gonna turn on only foreground. So now it seems like we're in a darkened cathedral with the light shining through the glass. For a finishing touch, we can search for Crate's Easy Glow and apply that to our adjustment layer. And now it looks like there's sunlight coming through our stained glass. Now this is a very simple and clean version because our logo is very simple and clean. But let me show you something cool. You can actually do this to a photo of a stained glass window to achieve a really realistic look. I find that the more detailed the window, the more realistic the effect. So I've got that reference that I showed you from before of a real stained glass window. We can actually apply the effect to this photograph. By the way, I got this from pexels.com. It's just a free stock photo site, but feel free to grab whichever image of a stained glass window you want, as long as it's fairly dark around the edges. So I'm gonna go through that process again really quickly using a photo instead of a logo. So I'll create a new composition and I'll drag and drop my reference photo onto my canvas. Let's scale it down so it fits on the canvas. Now I don't really need all of these pixels here on the outside. So I'm gonna go up here to my ellipse tool and draw an elliptical mask to try to isolate just the window. If you have a more complex shape, you may have to use the pen tool. Okay, I'm gonna right click and I'm going to pre-compose this. Okay, and we can see that this is now masked off. It's got an alpha channel, but I actually want alpha in between all of the glass panels. So all the black parts are supposed to be solder. They're not actually supposed to be glass or transparent. So the best way to do that is to use the extract effect. I'll drag and drop that onto my layer. And then over here, I can click on this left slider and start to bring it over. And you can see that the black pixels start to disappear. Now it's looking pretty crunchy. So what you can actually do is go right here and grab the bottom little box and drag that to the left and drag the top one to the right. And you can sort of get a softer edge that way. And that isolates each individual panel. Obviously the quality of your image really matters. So you wanna find one that doesn't have too much noise and is pretty high resolution. You can see I'm getting a lot of weird noise down here. This may cause a few issues, but I think it'll still look pretty cool. All right, let's drag and drop our video footage behind our stained glass window again. And let's right click, add a new adjustment layer, just like before. Let's search for creates glass and apply the effect to the adjustment layer. I'll hide my middle layer, which is my stained glass window. And then under the glass effect where it says textures, I'll open this up and change the layer to the second layer, which is my stained glass window. Now you can see I'm getting sort of an issue here. If this happens, it probably just means that you need to pre-compose your reference layer. So I'm gonna right click on my stained glass window and go pre-compose, make sure to transfer all the attributes to the new composition and press okay. Now it's working as expected, but we do need to turn off that second layer. We don't wanna see it. So now you can see we're getting this really cool effect where each panel is actually isolated and causing a ripple effect along the border of each panel, which is really nice. We can play with the presets to try to get a little bit closer to the effect we're trying to achieve. I think I'll go with aberration, but we do need to fiddle with the controls to make it look more like stained glass. So I'm gonna to go to my glass material and open that up and I'll turn on this checkbox that says use input as absorption. And now you can see it's tinting the light as it passes through the glass. Opening up the glass shape tab now, I'm gonna decrease the bevel width. I'm also gonna decrease the smoothing and you can see that each individual glass panel is getting a little bit sharper now. I'm gonna turn on only background to reveal that we've got this stained glass window to make it seem like we're looking through the stained glass window in a darkened cathedral. Now, as I play the video, I can see that the image is a little bit too clear. So maybe I'll go over to the blurring and turn that up. And one other cool step 
that may help you improve the realism of the effect is to go over here under the glass shape where it says input luma bump and turn that up to maybe one or two. It doesn't have to be very high. What that's gonna do is take the brightness of the image and actually apply it almost as a bump map to your glass. You can see if I crank it way up, those little grids become individual glass cells, which can look pretty cool. Once again, the last step is to add creates easy glow to give it that soft glowy effect. You might even want to experiment with adding some God rays. So if I search for creates easy God ray, this is actually a free effect. And I'm gonna drag and drop this onto my layer before the creates easy glow. And you can see this gives you a really cool sort of stylized look. I can move the center slider or grab the anchor point and move it around to make the rays come out off center. And now we have a really cool ethereal stained glass effect. One last little step if you want to just put it over the top is to add a 3D camera. To do that though, we actually want to get rid of the God rays and the easy glow and apply them after the 3D camera has been applied. So to make a 3D camera effect, I'm going to highlight all of my layers, right click, pre-compose, and I'll call this stained glass comp. And then over here in the layer palette, I'm going to make it a 3D layer. If you don't see the option for that, just press F4 and click on this little tiny checkbox with the 3D cube. Now I'm gonna go up to the layers, new, and add a new camera. Just press okay. And we can rotate and angle the camera by holding down alt and using the left mouse button to look up at the window. Holding down alt and using the right mouse button will allow us to zoom in. And the middle mouse button will move the camera. So we can get kind of a nice lower angle like this. To add some depth of field, I'm gonna go over here to the camera settings and click on depth of field. Let's increase the aperture pretty high that will make the window go out of focus, but we can change the focus distance by lowering it or raising it until the window comes into focus. And you can see that only a part of the window is in focus. It's out of focus as it gets closer to the camera or farther away from the camera. Now we can add a new adjustment layer. And to that layer, we're gonna add God rays and easy glow. A little bit too intense, so let's turn down the intensity of easy glow, maybe 70 or maybe even 50 in my case. Let's also change the center of the God rays. And maybe I'll increase the blurring because I think these really sharp edges don't quite look realistic enough for what I'm trying to achieve here. And that's how we created this really cool, realistic stained glass effect using just a few layers and the Crates Glass plugin. The cool thing about this technique is you can go as realistic or as stylized as you want to make a nice logo for yourself. If you make anything cool with this technique, be sure to share it with us on Instagram or post it to our Discord because we definitely want to see what you come up with. All right, later creators.